Hey, no long intro. Andrew Schulz. Oh man, ladies, why are you so obsessed with the serial killer shit? Oh, because the guy's hot. Ted Bundy. This is good that you said that. <laughs> I'm really glad you brought up Ted Bundy because I asked my girl to play a uh, serial killer thing and we watched two together. The first one we watched, I turned off because it was the female serial killer, Eileen Warnos, you know her? She killed three yeah. people, which is like some affirmative action bullshit. Uh, <laughs> three people, you're not a serial killer. That's a DUI, sweetheart, give it a rest, okay? It's a recall on broccoli, three people. <laughs> Mother Teresa killed more than three people, okay? <laughs> Sit down. Next one she put on was Ted Bundy. And he's the GOAT. <laughs> he's the GOAT. He's the greatest serial killer of all time. It's undeniable. And I'll tell you why. It's not because he killed 50 women. That's easy. Anybody could do that. That's... <laughs> I could kill 50 women with a pair of Lululemon pants. That's light work. It's just... Hey, they're giving out free Lulus in the alley, yeah. Just fuck it. <laughs> I play Whack a Megan for 30 minutes. I got 50 bodies. That's like, that's like, that's like. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. The reason he's so prolific is because he killed 50 women driving a tan Volkswagen Beetle. I'm gonna say that again, because that is impressive. He killed 50 women driving a tan Volkswagen Beetle, okay? Some of y'all drive Teslas, can't get no pussy, dorks. It was also the sound. Doors open by themselves, never a woman's legs, huh, you losers? <laughs> My car is electric, so is your fleshlight virgin. Shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> I'm watching this documentary, I'm like, yo, thank God this motherfucker didn't drive a Porsche, bro. <laughs> we might not have any women left in America if he was driving a Porsche. A Porsche? Are you kidding me? Only reason I finished the documentary is because I need to know the pickup line he was using to get these women into a tan Volkswagen Beetle. That's a valuable line. I might have a son one day and I'm gonna give him that shit instead of a car. <laughs> I get to the point of the documentary where they share the line. I will tell you guys the line tonight if you want me to tell y'all. Let's hear it. <laughs> okay, on one condition. Ladies, please control your pussies when I say this shit, please. I know how powerful this line is. Do a Kegel, just lock your shit up. <laughs> Okay? So I don't want y'all soaking up and sliding off your fucking seats. This man. <laughs> okay, it's a problem, all right? He would walk out of the worst car ever made, walk up to a woman he's never met in his life, and he'd go, excuse me, miss. My car broke down. Do you think you could help me fix it? No. <laughs> What I said to my girl was, this is disgusting. The way he's taking advantage of their kindness and goodwill. What I felt burning inside of me was, these chicks deserve to die, okay? They had it coming, can you fix my car? Ladies, you can't fix a car. You can't park a car, how the fuck are you gonna fix the car? 1970, I don't even think you were working yet. You definitely weren't mechanics. <laughs> Craziest part of that whole documentary they barely even touch on, and that is, of all the women that Bundy fucked and killed, there was actually one woman that he fucked, didn't kill, kept fucking. And this chick got me walking around now like, damn. This pussy amazing, y'all. This shit, wow. <laughs> <laughs> he killed you bitches? That's crazy. That's so different. That's so different. He made me breakfast. He made you dead, bitch? You better check your pH, sweetheart. Your shit was woofing. No. You had that woof, baby. I got that wop. Get it together. Oh, my. Not checking her pH. That was actually very funny. It escalated. This one was different, but you know, he wasn't wrong. If a man stops me and asks me to fix his car, you bet I won't even attempt. Now, do I know how to connect jumper cables or change a tire, check and add power steering fluid? You bet I do. I had an old car as my first car and anything that could go wrong with that thing did go wrong. But Ted Bundy is pretty much 
killed off any hope that someone would feel completely safe getting out of their car to help. Well, him and others. My true crime junkies know what I'm talking about. But to be nice, maybe, and this is a, a big maybe, I would crack the window just a little bit and call out and ask if he needed a tow truck. I could offer to call AAA, but that's only after making sure that my car door is locked. I would take my foot off the gas, but still have it hovering there to make sure if I had to accelerate, I could quickly. Just kind of letting the car roll forward as we spoke. And that is pretty much the extent of how helpful I'd be, on alert. And Ted Bundy was also relatively attractive, or at least not the ideal of what someone would imagine a scary guy to be, which I'm sure had a hand in helping these ladies feel safe getting out of the car to help him. So if you're attractive, just forget it. I'll drive right past you. <laughs> I'm kidding. Only kind of. On to his point, though, I know many people, women specifically, who are very into true crime, podcasts about mass murders, serial killers, etc. I don't really see the allure, but maybe I'm just not the target market. Anyway, Andrew Scholes. I have seen him on his podcast and then as a guest on other podcasts, but never his stand-up, so I'm really glad I watched this one. It was a subscriber request. Thank you for sending it over. I did read that he bought back this particular special from Amazon, I believe, for about a million dollars after they asked him to censor some of his triggering material, so I do respect that. I'll link you to his official website where he uploaded the whole special, as well as here on YouTube. And if you're an Andrew Schultz fan and have any more of his content that you'd like to recommend to the channel, please do. As far as today's literary recommendation, I don't read many crime-related novels, but In Cold Blood by Truman Capote is one that I have read and it is pretty good. It's set in 1950s Kansas. Four members of a family are murdered, no apparent motive, very little clues, and then it takes you from the investigation to the trial. And Truman Capote is an immersive author, so it's well worth reading. As always, if I can find you a free audiobook version here on YouTube, I'll link it in the bio, and if not, you'll just find the title linked. But that's a genre of book that I don't mind getting into. So if you have any crime-related books that you want to recommend to me, please do that. And that's enough from me. So let me know what you think about any of this. And as always, thanks for watching with me.